In this video, we're going to walk you through an easy to follow guide to building your own off-grid DIY solar setup. If you want a reliable backup power option to tie into your home or move toward an off-grid setup, this setup is powerful enough to power critical electrical loads in your home. If you're trying to understand the basics of a DIY solar setup and you're learning this for the first time, this video is for you. I'm not going to overburden you with technical terms, but rather provide a high-level overview while still showing the step-by-step -step process of assembling everything I believe anyone can perform. The advantage of learning how to build this setup is that you can easily customize it, modify in the future as your needs change, and most importantly, develop an important skill set. So let me start off by giving you a quick overview of how this system works. These are the four primary components. Solar panels collect energy from the sun and then pass the energy as direct current or DC power via cables to an inverter. The inverter regulates energy from the solar panels and the grid if you connect to it. It then passes the energy to batteries where it can pass it directly to devices drawing power from the inverter. To get the energy out of the battery, we need to convert it to usable electricity through our inverter. Then from the inverter, we can pass the energy to a simple fuse box, which can be connected to wall sockets and lights to power devices like our phones, laptops, refrigerators, or whatever else you want to power. As far as tools go, here's what you'll need. Drill to mount our inverter to the wall, Phillips screwdriver, large and small, and socket wrenches. Step one, positioning the components. This is a larger system, so we have to define where the inverter and battery will go before building the system and connecting everything together. I'm using my setup to power shed I'm developing to do vertical gardening in the future. I built a small storage area on the side of the shed. I've removed the door for this video so we can see everything. The battery sits on wheels, keeping it off the ground, and the inverter is mounted to the wall above the battery. We put a small piece of plywood on the back of the shed and then mounted the inverter to that piece of plywood. As you can see, we drilled holes in the side of the shed to allow the PVC pipe to pass through and carry our AC and DC lines. The inverter will accept AC input, which we're pulling from the house, and DC input from our solar panels. We'll cover this more in a moment. To connect our inverter to a fuse box, we run our lines from the inverter through a PVC pipe into the shed and connect it to the fuse box, which provides power to all our plug-ins. Again, we'll talk about that a little more in a moment. Step two, connecting the inverter to DC power from solar panels. As with all of our connections in this video, we utilize switches to disconnect our power sources during the process. Also, make sure any connection you're working on is disconnected first. Don't work with wires connected to the battery or an AC source unless you can verify it is disconnected. So let's connect our inverter to the solar panels. Our solar panels are on the south side, which gets the most exposure to the sun, and our shed is on the north side of my house. We had to run 125 feet of cables from the solar panels to the shed to connect our inverter to the solar panels. When DC travels over long distance, the voltage will drop. So to reduce this, you have to determine the correct wire size. To determine the correct size, I'll post links in the description section to calculators to help you understand the proper wiring size. I have two solar panel arrays for my setup, which means we have four cables, two from each array coming from our solar panels. Additionally, I'll post a link to this kit we're showing here. The website that sells these kits also has a support team to answer these questions as you build your own solar setup. As you can see, the pipe carrying our DC line comes up and into the shed here. We install the disconnect switch directly under the solar panels, enabling us to disconnect the DC power from the panels fully. This way, we can ensure that no power comes in when connecting the DC source to the inverter. We don't want to be handling live wires. Okay, four wires are coming from the solar panels into our shed. We're now going to connect these to our inverter. As you can see, we have four places to connect these on the inverter. Let's connect our first strand of wires. We're going to use our flathead screwdriver and open our insertion point by turning counterclockwise. If you look underneath here, you can see the positive and negative terminals. Open both the positive and negative terminals for all four wires by turning counterclockwise. This opens the terminals to allow us to insert our wires. Next, we're going to feed all of our four lines into the glands at the bottom of the inverter. Next, we'll connect the first set of wires into our inverter, starting with the red wire, which is a positive wire, into the terminal with the plus sign, and then tighten it down. Next, we're going to insert our negative wire into the terminal with a negative sign and also tighten it down. We'll repeat the same thing with the following two wires, carefully inserting the red cable into the positive and the black cable into the negative. Sometimes when feeding lines in, the wires may become a little bit frayed. Having a pair of pliers will enable you to fix that problem. Finally, we'll tighten those nuts on the gland to secure the wires. So now that our solar panels are connected up to our inverter, let's move to the next step. Step three, connecting the inverter to AC power. 
To connect our inverter to the grid, I did bring in a professional electrician to connect to a wall socket in our house. The professional connected the lines in a wall socket inside the house, drilled a hole through the wall, added a box as shown here, and then ran a line underground and up the side of the shed here. He added a disconnect switch here to fully disconnect our setup from the grid. Additionally, this connection to the grid, even when the hotline is disconnected from the grid, the ground wire is always connected. If your setup is not tied to the grid, you must install a grounding rod and connect it to the inverter. Again, and this is very important, ensure the lines coming into the inverter are disconnected from the grid before starting the next setup. The three wires coming in from our house are hot or load, neutral or common, and ground. The load is typically red or black, and the common is typically white. The ground is almost always green. Let's connect these three lines to the bottom of our inverter. If you look here at the bottom of the inverter, you'll see L, which stands for load, N, which is for our neutral or common line, and last is our ground as seen here with this symbol. Begin by opening the terminals to receive the lines by screwing them counterclockwise. Then insert the red line into the L terminal, and then tighten the screw by turning clockwise. Again, we'll insert our white line into the N terminal and tighten it down, and last we'll insert the green wire into our ground terminal. Again, tighten the screw. We'll switch the AC source on later when we get everything connected. Step four, connecting the inverter to the fuse box. I hired a professional to install the fuse box to connect the lines to the wall sockets and light switch. We'll run the lines from the inverter through the wall and connect it to the fuse box. With this setup, we'll also ensure the circuit breakers inside our fuse box are off inside the shed just in case. Now, as in the previous step, we had the load, neutral, and ground connections when we connected the lines from the AC connection to our inverter. Now you may notice that our lines here are all black. Why is that? Well, when setting up the connection to the fuse box from the inverter, well, we ran out of color-coded wiring, so we just used some spare wiring rated to carry the amperage we needed. We did, however, put tape on the wires so we knew which ones were which. Now, as you can see here, we have red on the load line, white on the neutral line, and yellow for the ground. Ground usually has green or sometimes green and yellow. Start by opening the terminals by turning the screws counterclockwise. Let's put the red line into the L, which is our load or hot, the white line into the N or neutral or common, and the yellow into the ground. Make sure that these are all tightened down. Step five, connecting the battery to the inverter. To connect our battery to the inverter, we need to use the cables that came with the kit, but we're also adding in a switch in between the inverter and battery to allow for an easy disconnect. Additionally, we're gonna need an additional red cable that will connect the disconnect switch and the inverter. The black cable will connect directly from the battery to the inverter. Begin by determining where the switch will fit best in your setup. Next, on the disconnect switch, I'll add the red cable that connects to the battery on the bottom post and the red cable going to the inverter on the top post. Next, I'll mount the disconnect switch here on the wall with screws. If you look underneath the inverter, you're gonna see a red and black tab. This is where we'll connect our red and black cables respectively. Finally, let's make sure our switch is in the off position and then we can connect our cable to the battery. We have now connected our battery to the inverter. Step six, testing our setup. Now that everything is connected, let's add the front panel back to our inverter. Next, let's start by ensuring our fuse box connected to the inverter is turned off. We don't want to switch on the system and accidentally have it under load. Also, we want to make sure our AC and DC connections are off. Next, let's turn the switch on to the battery and then turn on the inverter. Before we turn on the AC power source, I have learned with this system that AC input is set pretty high. So to avoid tripping our house's circuit, let's adjust the AC input settings to 10 amps. Then we'll connect the inverter to the solar panels by flipping the switch to DC. Before we connect the inverter to our AC input, we're going to open the circuit breakers inside the shed. Finally, we'll connect our AC input by flipping the connection switch. Let's now plug in an item to power it. And as shown here, I plugged in a circulating air fan in our inverter and system handles this just fine. If you'd like to see other videos similar to this one, please check out the two videos on the side of the screen. These show simpler DIY solar systems and how to set them up easily. If you'd like to check out any of the items we discussed, I'll put links in the description and comment section below. As always, stay safe out there.